It is your girl, Sherry Flair Tucker. And welcome to the very first episode of God Told Me to Do It. It's very interesting how I even got here. <laughs> and the whole purpose of this podcast will be to explore that very question and to share a little bit about my faith with you guys and how much stronger it is today. Um, first and foremost, though, I do want to say my voice is gone. Uh, yesterday, I got the opportunity to, uh, to celebrate my daughter's first birthday. And so I was screaming at her party. And not to mention, I went to church too before then. So <sighs> praise and worship, I went in, my voice is gone. Um, however, something did come to me, and I'm going to read this to you guys because I was definitely contemplating whether or not I should even do this podcast episode today um, because my voice was gone. And let me see if I can find the note about it because it was interesting. Yeah, so this morning when I woke up and I was considering like not doing this and rescheduling, this came to me. And when stuff comes to me, I know it's the Holy Spirit talking. And so the Holy Spirit said, when you're on assignment, excuses are irrelevant. So show up and do the work anyway. So that is why I'm here. Um, hopefully next time I'll be back and better. But either way, I feel like God is going to use this to serve someone in some capacity. And that's what this is for. Um, so let's get started with my story, right? How did I get here? Very interesting. So I'm going to tell my story in segments um, throughout different episodes of the pod. So if you feel like I'm glazing through the story um, pretty quickly, no worries. I'll definitely go into detail in the future um, with, you know, those particulars. But I would say all of this started or the catalyst to this was June 10th, 2023. It was the day after I went into labor with my youngest daughter. Uh, what is significant about that time is that I wasn't due until October. I went into labor at 21 weeks and six days. And so something like this was unheard of at the hospital. They actually told me that they did not take babies that were under 22 weeks and basically told me that my option was to basically allow for my daughter to lay on me as I delivered or after I delivered, and they will allow her to expire peacefully with me. However, my husband and I felt that was not an option, and we advocated for ourselves to have the NICU come in, even though this was something that they would not do typically. But God being God, orchestrating things behind the scenes without me even knowing. And, you know, with hindsight being 2020, now I know the reasoning for everything. But it just so happened that a doctor was scrubbing in at the very moment that I was going into labor. And this doctor came in and said, okay, we're going to take this baby to the NICU. But where my story really begins is that very next day I'm in the hospital and it happens to be a time where my husband had to go home and check on the dog and my my oldest daughter and, you know, my, my family was gone. My friends who were checking on me were gone. My doula was gone. And I happened to be in the room by myself. It, it got extremely silent, silent to the point where you can hear a pin drop. But what was so... Oh, my goodness. How can I explain it? What was so poignant in that moment, though, was I could hear the clock ticking on the wall and the ticking got louder. And as the ticking is getting louder, I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> what is happening? And I hear a voice distinctly say, you don't need anything outside of me. I look around. I'm like... Okay, well, God, if this is you, you're going to have to give me a scripture. Now, the reason why this is significant for me is because I've never been one to read the Bible and know it front to back and know how many books are and many chapters are in each book. I don't know any of this. So I felt like if this is you, God, then you will give me a specific scripture. And I heard Isaiah 58.3. And so I want to share that with you guys today. So Isaiah 58, 3 says, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? 
Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. So I'm like, okay, doesn't make much sense. But it hit somewhere. <laughs> like, I couldn't tell you exactly where it hit, but it was like, hmm, this is something that you need to investigate fully. And so as I began to read the whole chapter versus just that verse, it gave me a lot more context. And this is what stood out to me after I read that chapter. Um, it was verses 11 and 12. So it's Isaiah 58 verses 11 and 12. And it says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. I have always felt this extreme responsibility for my family and those connected to me. This, this responsibility of redeeming or reconciling us in a way. And I had no idea in what ways. But when I read that, I automatically felt like this is the reason why you're going through what it is that you're going through because you're one of the only people in your family that hears from God directly. And I'm not saying I'm the only one, but I'm one of maybe two or three. And I feel like God is like, now that I have your attention, here's what I need for you to do. And the sole purpose of it is to restore and rebuild. And so hearing that whole message of you don't need anything outside of me really stuck with me from that day. And it was one of the reasons why I turned from everything that I was practicing previously. So let's rewind a little bit and I'll go into detail in the future. But if we rewind, before the pandemic happened, I had just joined the church and I was very excited about it. And I had a very negative experience in the church with a particular someone who was an elder of the church. And I allowed that experience to pull me back away from the church. It just so happened that the pandemic was the perfect time to step away because then I didn't have to explain myself. <laughs> it was like, oh, well, everything is closed. I can exit, right? And so that's what I did. But I also said, now that I'm out the church, I'm going to take this opportunity to explore all the things that they say not to look into and not to study because I'm I'm just tired. Like, I'm tired of being told what to do and what to think and what to read. And it just all felt so heavy. And I was just like, I just need to break away from all of this and be free. And so it was during the time of the pandemic where I began to look into uh, astrology, tarot, Afghan spirituality, and all the things. And I found a lot of, you know, a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. I found that I was naturally gifted and intuitive with when it came to tarot. I began offering readings to people. Things were on point. I felt like, okay, maybe this is the path that I'm supposed to go on. and Maybe this is the reason why church didn't work out. And maybe this was the reason that the pandemic happened at this time for me to like be awakened to, you know, this truth. And to then hear this message years later, I would say, I would say the pandemic was probably like, what, 2020? So to hear this message in 2023, in this hospital room alone, God telling me, you don't need anything outside of me. It literally wrecked my world because I felt like I was finally at a place where it's just like, yo, like I'm I'm in my groove. I'm, I'm in my vibe. Like I'm helping people with tarot. Um, but one thing that I still wrestled with was I did not have peace. I still wasn't experiencing a certain level of peace. And you would think that doing tarot where you actually 
are pulling cards to speak to what's happening in your future with hopes of getting this information and being able to prepare yourself for whatever it is to come, that that would give you some sort of peace. But it didn't. I was constantly searching for more and more and more information. It was never enough. So to get that message in that hospital room and then to feel the automatic tug on my heart to turn from everything that I was practicing at that time because God said I didn't need anything outside of him. I knew that I had to be obedient, but I also knew that it was going to be hard for me because I just didn't understand it. But I did it anyway, Uh, which is how I got here (laughs) to where I am now. There's so many different events that happened in between that time, but a huge, I like to call a pivotal moment for me, happened April 19th of this year. Um, And since y'all like facts, (laughs) I got my journal. I got a text thread because I don't need none of y'all saying, oh, that's cap. You know what I mean? That's what these young kids be saying anyway. But I'm going to read something to you guys. This is my journal, first of all. I have been an avid journaler for years. but. I'm going to share two different things. So the day before April 19th, it was a Thursday. It was April 18th. The time was 11.44 a.m. And I was actually getting ready, getting ready to get into the shower. And I was a bit frustrated this day. And so I just said out loud as I'm getting in the shower, I was like, yo, God, what are you doing with my life right now? I literally said it like that. And immediately I heard, I'm putting you in position. And I was like, really? (laughs) How? Doesn't look like that at all. Doesn't feel like that at all. But the message hit in here. So I hopped out the shower. I grabbed my journal. I wrote it down. And I got back to the rest of my day. But it was the very next day, Friday, April 19th, where I had this particular experience. And I'm going to read to you what happened. Today, while driving, I was visited by the Holy Spirit. I got warm all over. I felt as if I needed to cry, but I couldn't. So as I'm pulling into my parking spot at home, I said aloud, the Holy Spirit is here. So I started to pray, but it was more like a conversation. I pray for Kennedy, Mars, Jamar, and myself, that I become the mother and the wife they need to thrive. And then when I begin to say, I'm scared to, but I surrender, that's when the tears began to flow. How fitting that it happened on a Friday. I was also told to fast today before all of this happened. So back to that scripture I got (laughs) in the hospital where it was highlighting fasting. It was God giving me a precursor of what would be necessary for this next phase of wherever he was taking me. And it all started this Thursday and Friday in April. Fridays have been very significant for me for some time. Uh, My youngest daughter was born on a Friday. And with everything that happened, you know, that's forever etched in my mind. There's some other situations that happen in my life, and they happen to all land on Fridays. I found out I was pregnant with my youngest daughter on a Friday night. So, yeah. And I just couldn't believe that I was having this experience. And while I'm in the car, mind you, I I did a very general, uh, like, journal entry on this because I was just trying to get as much down so that way if I had to jog my own memory, I could recall it. So I'm going to share this part with you because I didn't write it down. When I said out loud, the Holy Spirit is here, immediately I knew, like, this is your opportunity to really share your heart here. And I not only prayed for my family, but I went into detail about things that I struggle with. And one of those things was smoking. Like, I smoked black and mouths and have been smoking black and mouths on and off for like over, I want to say maybe eight to 10 years now. Um, thank God I haven't spoken none, none in three weeks. So praise God for that. Um, 
But I just really started to run down everything that bothered me, plagued me. Like, God, I, I want to experience peace. I don't, I don't even know how to experience joy. Um, I'm afraid of experiencing joy because I'm afraid of life letting me down. And it just makes me want to cry right now because it is such a horrible way to live when you're afraid of being too happy because you are so concerned with what might be around the corner and that pulling you down. And so I constantly live in a state of like, you don't want to get too happy. You don't want to get too excited about things because when life happens to you, you don't want the drop to be so drastic. I'd rather drop from here than from way up here. But that's not a way to live. And I feel like that's the way I've been living for such a long time. And I started telling God about all of these things in that moment because I knew your presence is here. And if anyone can do anything with what I am dealing with and with all of my brokenness and with all of my hurt, it's you in this moment. And I'm going to be so raw and transparent about all of me. And I believe that is why when I said the words, I surrender, the floodgates opened. Literally, my tears begin to just fall because it was almost like God saying, thank you, my child, for being open and honest with me. This is all I wanted from you. That's what it felt like in that moment. So, yeah, it all started with me for real 100% surrendering my life to God and really feeling it in my heart. And since then, it's been just a beautiful expose of God taking me by the hand and leading me through what next steps I need. You know, after this situation in April, I began to fast. He told me what foods to stay away from at that time. I ended up dropping some weight at that time, and it wasn't about losing the weight. But what I found peculiar is that all the times that I tried to lose my quote unquote baby weight prior to this, um, I was having such a hard time, but God was leading me through what to eat, what not to eat, what times to eat even. And I dropped like 25 pounds without even trying, fasting. And so... This is how God continued to get my buy-in. It was like, I'm listening, I'm, I'm receiving your directives, I'm taking action, and I'm seeing the fruit of it. And so it's like, okay, God, well, let me start to ask you about everything. Let me, let me start to inquire about everything that I'm going through, no matter how small I might think it may be, down to decisions of, of like, what should I wear today? Um, what street should I drive down today? Um, one thing that was a game changer for me, because, you know, I'm a, a intellectual type person where if I want to learn something, I immediately want to get into the student mode and study and go to school for it. And me trying to approach the Bible that way wasn't really helping. It, it didn't feel like the Bible was coming to life for me. I felt like I was just reading it to complete it and I wasn't getting anything from it. So I even started asking, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to read today? And that has been such a game changer. Like, talk about a right now word, like for exactly what it is that I'm going through. And even in the times where I don't understand, like, why do you have me reading this? I'll then go to church and that's what the sermon's on. Or a week down the line, I'm in a situation or I'm having a conversation with someone. And then it's like, wow. That's why I needed that. So that particular encounter in the hospital, June 10th of 2023, is what got me here. And I'm still journeying. I don't know it all. I don't think we ever leave this place knowing it all. But what I do know for sure is that God is real and that I now understand what it means to really believe in your heart 
Um, because when you feel that tug in your heart, that's how you know that God is really doing a deep work in you. Um, obedience is something that I strive for daily. Um, I look forward to hearing from God and, and, and him telling me like, this is what I need you to do. Um, that's the only reason why I'm sitting here in front of you guys today, because God literally said, you need to speak to the people and you need to have a podcast. And I was just like, okay, don't want to do that. But I have no choice because you told me to. And I still sat on it for not long. I sat on it for maybe about a month, a month and a half. But in between that month and a half, I had three significant experiences happen. One being my aunt. Shout out to my aunt, Misa. We were having a conversation and she was just like, you know what, Nay, that's my nickname. You have such a beautiful story and you have a way of communicating with people. You should start a podcast. I said, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, maybe about two weeks after that, my mom, why won't you just do a podcast? Like, you're always talking and it's always so interesting. And for that to come from my mom, was kind of jarring because my mom is not, you know, one of those people that she wouldn't even consider herself to be a creative. So I don't even think she listens to podcasts. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for her to say, you need to have your podcast. Okay. I'm like, all right, heard it a second time. But the icing on the cake <laughs> was when I got invited to be a guest on a podcast by my homeboy, Day One, who is a, a dope producer in the hip-hop arena. I got invited to be a guest on a podcast hosted by Doughboy, um, who's a, a rapper, a comedian from Wild and Out. And he has this podcast where you come and you talk, they interview you, and then the second half of the interview, you actually create a song on the spot. And I'm like, yo, this is interesting. The old me would have been like, no, I don't want to do that because I'm so insecure about my creative process when I create music. Um, but something told me to do it, like to do something different for once. And so I did. I was like, even though I'm scared to do this in front of people because they live stream it on top of filming, I was like, fine, I'm going to go. We weren't into our conversation no more than 20 minutes when the host, Doughboy, said, yo, do you have your own podcast? Because I feel like you should be interviewing me. And I'm like, I said, hold on. Let, let me tell you the significance of that. And so then I shared with him what I'm sharing with you guys now. And he was like, well, let me pause and say what I really heard. I really heard she needs to be interviewing you. So when you're ready to talk about your podcast, maybe I can help you produce it. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, God. I hear it. That's the directive. Do a podcast. And so by the time I was like, okay, I'm going to do it, I then asked the Holy Spirit, when do you want me to launch it? And before I could even get the question out, it said, June 14th. I said, that's like tomorrow. <laughs> what do you mean June 14th? But then I also said, if I check this calendar and June 14th lands on a Friday, I'm going to run out of this building. And I look at my phone and behold, June 14th is on a Friday. So what more confirmation could I get, right? And I know what it means to be obedient. <laughs> and I know what it means to be disobedient. And I'm in a season in my life where I really and truly only want what God has for me. And that is the reason why I'm doing this. So I hope this was a pretty good episode one for you guys, right? To give you a little bit of background, a little bit of the why of how I got here. And like I said, the next few episodes will be even more details about some of the stories that I shared with you today. So yeah, thank you for checking this out. And 
thank you to God for um, seeing or how how do I want to say this? Thank you, God, for seeing who I truly am and knowing what I am truly capable of and pushing me to be the best version of myself. And I want to end this pod with a prayer. And God, I thank you for all that you are, for all that you've done, um, for everything that you're currently doing and for everything that you will do in the future. And I pray that this podcast episode and whatever it is you have planned for the future touches those who is meant to touch. I pray that I begin to become even more sensitive to your to your word, to hearing your voice, to your directives. Help me to be obedient in all things in my life, both seen and unseen. Help me to continue to slay the demons that I fight personally. I also pray that this pod can be an inspiration for those out there who may be on the same trajectory as I am, who are learning to fully surrender and trust you with all things. Um, I pray that they do it now in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. I pray that you give them the strength and the courage to seek you genuinely, to not seek religion, but to seek relationship with you, deep, intimate relationship with you, so they can see and know for themselves that you are a good God. You are our father. And we have the power to accomplish all things in you, should we ask, should we knock, and should that door be open? So I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. In your mighty name, I pray and say, amen. Peace out, y'all. Thank you.